Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Hey Santee, can you do one on Lumberjacks of the Old West? The Boxing Kangaroo. I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. First off, let me say that some requests mentioned loggers as well. I looked up the difference and found that logger is a more modern term for those who harvest trees. The job of cutting down trees and transporting them to sawmills was backbreaking and dangerous. The pay wasn't great and the working conditions matched. However, you didn't need to go to the gym after work. He's a lumberjack and he's okay. He sleeps all night and he works all day. Now. Did you honestly think I wouldn't put that in there? <laughs> Each man's job had a descriptive label. Buckers sawed the trees into manageable parts after the fallers chopped them down. Peelers stripped the bark off and the river rats got them down to the sawmills. These men were climbing, cutting, sawing, and hefting trees pretty much all day long. They were strong and fit and ate a lot of food to fuel their bodies. It suggested that their breakfast was around 5,000 calories alone. The Vancouver Hotel in 1870 made a breakfast with the thought of lumberjacks in mind. It was eggs, fried pork, and flapjacks. Nowadays, seeing a lumberjack breakfast on a menu is pretty common, and you don't have to wear flannel to eat it. Lumberjacks lived in camps and, like cowboys, slept in bunkhouses. These bunkhouses were the epicenter of their social life, where they played cards and talked about the social ramifications of HIPAA violations in the workplace. No. Nope. Oh, okay, maybe not that. But this... <laughs> Alright, that may be a bit of a stretch too. Let's just stick with playing cards. The camps were often mobile as the front line of their work was ever-changing. The tools of the logger were many. Axes, chains, wedges, saws. Because the trees out west were larger in diameter, the falling axes were longer than their eastern counterparts. Saws could reach 18 feet long, and even in two-man shifts, cutting up a single redwood to a manageable size could take days. Once the logs were cut down, they were transported to sawmills to be made into building materials. The method you may recognize from movies and TV would be floating them down the river. Logging camps would have oxen or other livestock that would pull sleds to nearby rivers. Then, in the spring, when the ice would melt, the logs made their way to the sawmills. From the Rocky Mountains all the way to Maine, timber enterprises dotted the landscape. In 1869, there were 14 sawmills in the Puget Sound region of Washington Territory, and they churned out a whopping 170 million feet of lumber. Really, Paul Bunyan? That's right. The sheer power and masculinity involved with logging introduced some great tales. Paul Bunyan, the giant mythical lumberjack, could very well have been based on the legendary Big Joe Muffle Rock. Big Joe was a tough fellow who operated in Canada and the U.S. in the early to mid-1800s. Stories about him holding off 150 Irish thugs by using one of them as a bat is still told today. Another timber feller credited with inspiring this folklore was Saginaw Joe Fournier, who worked in Michigan. This logging camp foreman was said to have a double row of teeth and would bite chunks out of bars in local saloons to impress folks. Where is the bartender? <laughs> yeah, well, I thought it was funny. This is just stupid. After the turn of the century, felling timber became more mechanized. Chainsaws and other technological advances streamlined the work and shrunk down the labor force. But with the advent of railroads and growing towns, the lumberjack was of huge importance to the success of the North American continent. 
and uh, making pancakes popular. Yeah. Well, folks, we really went out on a limb to provide you that information. You might say we got to the root of the subject, so. Okay. Hey, we're doing a holiday giveaway. This lovely hat here, which is a crushable wool felt hat made by Stetson. And the size is seven and a quarter. It was actually donated by a subscriber and I'm excited to give it to one of you. In order to win this hat, you have to put the words Mad Hatter down in the comment field below. Now, once again, that's Mad Hatter. So we'll announce the winner next week at the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Thank you.